So, some of the uh, some of the speakers this weekend have like very deep scientific backgrounds. So I was feeling a little intimidated, and I wanted to have you know all the obligatory graphs and charts and all that. And uh, I started making a pie chart, and it just you know I just couldn't get past that level. So this is going to be really a little bit more kind of philosophical. Um, I'm going to be kind of outlining the way that I view the whole fitness world and um, it's a little different than uh, what, how, how some people think of this. So for some of you guys, this is going to be just kind of preaching to the choir and for other people, it may be a little uncomfortable, but either way, it should be interesting. So I kind of have this hierarchy in terms of how I view uh, people in the whole uh, fitness community and, 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 and in terms of how they can be categorized. So most people, if not all people, start off sedentary. They basically either have no relationship to physical activity whatsoever or they have an adversarial relationship to physical activity, one or the other, but most people start there. And then if you're lucky, you eventually kind of uh, ascend to the level of exerciser. And um, this is where you've kind of seen the light you realize that you've abused yourself for far too long and uh, this is where life really starts to suck because now you realize that you know you have some atonement to do okay so uh, can you tell I have a degree in sociology so the thrust of my talk here today is to get people to think a little less like an exerciser and a little bit more like an athlete and then toward the end of the talk I want to actually encourage you to actually be a competitive athlete because I think that's how you get the best results from, from your activities. Okay? All right, so here's the lowest run. No relationship to physical activity at all. By the way, it's only been recently in human history that being sedentary was even an option, right? Because throughout the, the vast bulk of human existence, you had to be rigorously active just to survive. Uh, so this has only been a recent thing that you've even had that, that choice. And that, that's where the term survival of the fittest comes from. Okay. But uh, over time, of course, uh, you know, the negative consequences of your behaviors will eventually eclipse the, the benefits, and uh, that's where we get into the exercise thing. Now, by the way, there's this thing that I call the unhappy triad, which is like you're laying on the couch watching TV, and then you see the uh, fast food commercial, and then the fridge is only 10 feet away and then you end up like this, and now you have no energy, and now you're back on the couch, and it's just like this vicious circle that feeds on each other, you know, the couch, the fridge, and the TV, bad combination. All right, now, as a couch potato or as a sedentary person, your relationship to food is exactly opposite of your relationship to activity. All food is good, you never saw food you didn't like. So in terms of thermodynamics, you're just kind of living this life that's all about, you know, trying to, uh, you know, it's calories in, calories out. And uh, as an exerciser, well, actually, in, in this stage, your, your philosophy is kind of like no pain, all gain. You're, you're avoiding physical activity, and your, your expenditure is minimized, and your intake is, is maximized. Okay? Um, the lucky few uh, eventually make it to the level of what I would call exerciser, and this is where, you know, if you decide, okay, now, starting Monday, and by the way, that's the, that's the sure sign that you're on the cusp of, between couch potato and exerciser, is that when you say, starting Monday, which is the surest sign that you are not serious, because if it's worth doing, you're just going to do it right now. But... Um, now you decide, you know, you basically are telling everybody that, you know, you're, you, you want to improve your health and so you're going to start dieting and exercising. Really, you just want to look better, but you tell people that it's, that it's about health. Okay? So, here we go. Calories in, calories out. Uh, and uh, in the exerciser level, and you'll see how this will flesh out as we go along, your life is really about guilt and deprivation and kind of uh, nutra torture and uh, so it's, it's almost like an atonement kind of situation where you have to make up for, for past sins by uh, hurting yourself through exercise. And this is where you pick up the no pain, no gain thing. All right? And this, I, I'm a little torn about no pain, no gain because there's a kernel of truth in no pain, no gain. When you're getting out of your comfort zone at whatever level you, you happen to be at, there's going to be some pain, there's going to be some discomfort. But the, being too heavily identifying with no pain, no gain, 
uh, ends up making you uh, make very bad uh, activity and diet choices, like, uh, for example, yoga and vegetarianism, okay? So, we'll come back to that in just a second. So, when you're an exerciser, now you've suddenly discovered that not all food is good. There are good foods and bad foods, and your life now is kind of consumed by trying to figure out which foods are good, which foods are bad. Doesn't it always take you aback when, when, when like a novice person comes up and says, hey, is such and such a food bad? Or is such and such a food fattening? You know, if, if you are higher on the evolution, that just strike, that strikes you as an odd way to put that, right? Foods are not good or bad. Your, your long-time habits and activities are good or bad, and foods can be useful or not useful. Uh, that way you don't have the moral judgment, right? Being an exerciser, it's almost like a religious kind of thing. It's almost like a moralistic kind of attitude that you develop. You know, your relationship to food is kind of like that, you know? So, but the problem is, you have to eat, right? You, you have to eat. This isn't like being an alcoholic. You have to eat. So now, you know, this becomes a perfect mechanism for, uh, you know, guilt, denial, self-loathing. Uh, I'm going to leave this up for a second because it's just so awesome. Can you read this? This is like, look at this, art words you don't know, you know? It's really good. This, so this is the self-loathing uh, journal. And then, you know, as an exerciser, here's what your nightmares look like. This is what life is all about. You are paying for your sins by trying to crank up cal uh, calories on the stupid ergometer. And, you know, you take a perfectly good activity like walking, and then you make it suck by being on a treadmill, and all the numbers are wrong anyway, and anybody who's been in this industry for any period of time know this is total BS, and this is the, the, the least effective way to get to your goals, and uh, everybody, I mean look, all you guys are involved in physical activity, right, whether you call it exercising or working out or training. When I say the word exercise, do you have a, viscerally, do you have a, a, a negative or a positive, like, feeling about the word exercise? It's negative, right? I mean, John, do you, you know, do you exercise? You train, you know? Right. All right. So if you need to atone for your sins, you should go to church, right? And I mean, I'm agnostic, but I'm just saying that makes more sense than doing it on the treadmill. All right. So now you're at war with your body and, you know, um, you start looking at solutions like, you know, ally, and this is a crappy solution, I just got to tell you, in terms of solving your problems. It's just not a good idea at all. And your level of maturity is very low. You want your cake and you want to be able to eat it too. So look at this. This is marketing for exercisers. Eat what you like, when you like. So, you know, when you see Cassandra Forsythe talk about carb intake later, am among other things, they're like, no, 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 what I think I will do is I'll just eat the processed carbs anyway, but then I could take this. Funny story, I have a, fr a friend locally who is uh, a big time marketing guru, and we were having breakfast one time, he says, Charles, you know, you know how they always say, like, the magic pill? He goes, how come nobody's actually made the magic pill? Like, how come nobody has come up with a product that's called the magic pill? <laughs> uh, to my knowledge, I've never seen it. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. So. <laughs>